going to be the best. I'm ready to go home and do the work. You big daddy. Go away. Why on it? Say hi. Now I'm going to show you something that is going to totally blow your rocks off. Hi. How are you? Hello. I think you guys got a new band out in here. Talking to you the way I want to talk to you. If you have a problem, turn off your station. It's Wednesday. I can't believe it. It's my first blind date. Oh, I do it all the time. Really? <laughs> Woo. Woo. You guys meet? Greg, Janice? We sure did. <laughs> Great. We've got chemistry here. Do you feel it? I felt it. All right, Janice. Leave it up to Jay, dropping shits in cars to start the show. What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday. We're almost, we're a little under two weeks from Halloween. Fucking pumpkin beers. Legion Night Owl. Tis the season. We got Kurt drinking some shit. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Drive through red. Dry hop it, red ale from San is, Jose, California. Is it delicious? Yep. Nice. Welcome, everyone. Oh, we got Jay. Jay here. Jay's not here. It's just you and I tonight. Fuck him. Yeah, he's, he's going to sit in the background just fucking dropping shits all over the place. <laughs> he's on the water fountain. He calls a toilet. <laughs> or a bidet. One of the two. What's good, everyone? Thank you for hanging out. On this Wednesday, October 18th, again, a little less than two weeks from the fucking best night of the year, Halloween. Kurt's going to go out. He's going to be Jay Hannon for our uh, Halloween this year. He goes trick-or-treating. Right. Jay's going to be Caleb Rappaport. It's going to be amazing. And I still don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to show up to UPS with like 38 fucking guitar boxes in the back of my truck and just start unloading them. <laughs> just fucking throwing them at him. <laughs> Fuck, Jay Hannon's here. Hide. We're on break. Idiot. <laughs> I saw that you uh, you became a channel member, so congrats. Let me fucking take highlight off, this. Hey. Where is it? Jeez, I gotta take a leak so bad I can taste it. Right there. Welcome, Kurt. You uh, are now... You, if you're listening, anyone who's part of the show should get free channel membership. This is bullshit. It's true. I'm on my, I'm on my soapbox right now. Fuck them. Why? Oh. <laughs> why? Why should we get why, why should we get free channel membership? What the fuck have we done? We only pay for the whole fucking channel. <clears throat> yep. But besides that, wow. That's right, well, Leo Safko. We fucking pay for shit. Yeah, nothing's free, folks. Suck a dick. Time is money. <laughs> right, right, Beesman? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we should all make Funko Pops of each other. I was working on one for Kurt. <laughs> what? Shit. <laughs> I'd rather make a plaster Paris of your dick and send it to my grandma. Wait, hold on. We should make we should make a Beesman one of like Beesman's insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping cum t-shirt. <laughs> Just like the shoes from last week that Jay had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, got, I got a pair. Out. We get, we already have a manufacturer wanting to promote them. <laughs> and then we get Paul Paul to design his own towel that's just like stiff as a board. <laughs> so we we are down one member tonight. Caleb has the itis. So everyone send so your guys. Role. Hey, I'm at Guitar Center. <laughs> we don't that's know if really he has the itis, so don't say that. Vagitis. He has vagitis. Vagitis. So anyway, Caleb, feel better, man. We'll see you next week. Hopefully. And, uh, we look forward to uh, talking about your Texas swing. Brian, could you imagine if I talk like this? I oh, could. Yeah. We wouldn't be friends, and I don't think we would start a show together. <laughs> the Echo would be everywhere. Wasn't that an episode of um, Growing Pains, right? 
or no what what's what's 80s or 90s sitcom there was some hot chick that had like a high-pitched voice and he kept telling her shh, 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 just you know every time they'd hang out he would have her not talk do you want me to suck your balls shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't I don't know that show. A girl say you want me to suck your balls. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, to, right to the balls. I remember uh, Webster. You remember when Webster would like run in the walls? Like he opens a clock and he's fucking gone, just like hides in the walls. Did they have him go in the walls? Yeah. Really? Webster. <laughs> <laughs> go to your room. It's fucking all wall. right. He walks the clock, opens it up, and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tell the dog store. So uh, October eighteenth, boys. It is. Wow. So what's new and exciting, Jay? Um. Nothing. And sometimes Where? it's better like that, isn't it? Hold I'm on. Where's I? What? Where's what? Where's the air raid? Just deleted it. <laughs> Yours is better <laughs> than mine. <laughs> you don't know. Oh, take a fucking gander here. Andy Carson. Thank you so much. Andy. Two months. Oh, two months. Speaking of Andy. Sucking up to the big brass tonight. Yep. I was strutting yep. around today with this shirt on. Did you get any free shit? No, but last week or two weeks ago, I went to the store with Ellie. And whenever we go to Lowe's Foods, there's the little bakery there. So, you know, as soon as they see a kid, hey, kid, do you want, <laughs> would you like a cookie? You know, I mean, she's actually nicer than that. But anyway, so she said something about, thank you for your service. Would you like a free cookie as well? And I was like, no, no, it's, it's it, you know, I'm not a. I'm not man enough to be a firefighter. It's a, it's a friend shirt. So, well, not hey, a friend shirt. That shirt on, and he goes into his front yard and gets a ladder out to get something out of the tree. And the neighbor's like, oh, it's a fucking firefighter. And then he gets on the ladder, like, no, that fucker ain't a firefighter. Look at the way he's getting on that ladder. It's like he's a fucking humping. Dude, Herman. He's humping it. He's not, I'm not a firefighter. I'm a cop. I'm a cop. You're with you. <laughs> Good deal. I'm a firefighter. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. You're the fucking man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, what's been going on on, on YouTube lately? I saw yesterday uh, there was a few shows on the uh, Wolfgang Van Halen wedding. Uh, tuned in, saw 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 some cool cats going over the uh, the menu. <laughs> you fuckheads, get in here! <laughs> I'm just wondering. Did they have any uh, like uh, pigs in a blanket or uh, chicken fingers or anything like that? Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> I'm wondering. That's what I had at my wedding. You know, we had fucking pigs in a blanket, mozzarella sticks and shit. Beesman I think, remembers. I, I do. I, I do remember that. It was delicious. <laughs> Any tacos and fucking dino nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> right next, Pepto Bismol right there on the shelf. You, 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 you wouldn't believe. <laughs> You wouldn't believe how many people came up to Jeannie and I at that wedding, at our wedding, and were like, you guys got fucking pigs in a blanket. You guys got fucking mozzarella sticks. Like, yeah. You know, we don't need uh, this fa a fancy shit that everyone's like, oh, God, I got to eat this. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was delicious. <laughs> Kudos to Jeannie for an amazing – That when was that wedding? Like 2010? Yeah, <laughs> October 24th, 2010. Long ass time ago, I can oh. imagine the caterer just running the microwave like crazy, trying to get all. <laughs> How many wait, wait, wait. we got to get in here for this wedding? So Ellie's <laughs> birthday is your anniversary. No, Ellie's birthday is the. Uh, I'm sorry, our anniversary is the 23rd. Okay. Ellie's birthday is the 24th. Gotcha. Okay. I hope Jeannie didn't hear me. Uh... <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, Wolfgang's wedding, foot cake is here. Nice to have you here, Tony. Hope the rest of the boys are uh, joining you. What's up, Cakes? Jay, when's, when's Ellie's birthday? Um, The 24th of October. Oh, she's right in between uh, my two daughters. 22nd and 28th. Look at that. See? 
Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's got his tub of candy corn right here. Yeah. All right. Hole, candy you have corn. a hole in the bottom of it? <clears throat> Jay, when do you start buying candy corn? Is it already in the house? Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it, yeah. It is? With, with the pumpkins. Yeah. The pumpkins the are the shit. Pumpkins are the shit. Yeah. Yep. And then it, it's the instant. Do I have to? Go, do I need to go to the dentist? Check. That's what it is. So you, as soon as you start eating candy corns and candy pumpkins, it's like, yeah, maybe I need to make it make a dentist appointment now. Maybe you should get some retainers like Brian has, just to put them on over your teeth when you eat candy. You know, that's actually a decent exactly. idea. There you go. Mm -hmm. You won't ever have to brush your damn teeth ever again. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, stupid like shit, <laughs> um, this is a good segue. Uh, what What is everybody's opinion on <laughs> – I'm trying to find it now. Um, gym okay. etiquette. And not J-I-M etiquette, gym etiquette. Like working out at the gym? Yes. The fitness yeah. center? Yes. In regards to what? In regards to your text message last night. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, dick tease. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. If you want to elaborate, please do so. I'm trying to find the text message, and I can't fucking find it. Well, if you're five foot five and you've been fired from a YouTube show. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Take pictures of chicks, and no one would care, but Brian can't do it. <laughs> well, no, no. So, anyway, so last <laughs> Monday, well, it wasn't Monday. It was, it was Monday night, right? So I'm assuming Beesman's at the gym. So we we get a text message. Now, Brian, should we not be talking about this or something? Good. Yeah, fine. Yeah. So he said he texts so many butt cheeks here at the gym should be illegal. So I chime in with pics or it didn't happen. <laughs> so Kurt takes a picture or sends a gif of somebody, you know, with their camera phone out, fucking snapping photos. We get nothing. Yep. Nothing. What a letdown. What a letdown. Right? So now I know, I guess technically, maybe you shouldn't, right? Take pictures of girls' asses while they're working out. But but hold on a second. I mean, I don't go to the gym, but I have Instagram and I have Twitter. <laughs> and all it is is girls at the gym filming themselves in painted on yoga pants. Right. With their asses sticking out, squatting, flexing, doing all this shit. And it's like, that should be fair game. <clears throat> it should be. I agree. Should be fair game. Right? The issue is you look like a total creep bag <laughs> if uh, you're taking photos. Boner jams. <laughs> I know. I'm looking for the picture of him taking selfies. Do we there's, have it in here? There are so many people at the like when i went it was at the end of some class and the amount of regardless of how big or small you are <laughs> the tightness I of mean, the pants what where, is it five six inches oh, long something like that or is it it is, small? it's like a five by seven okay <laughs> it is okay. so we had a, a woman there's a woman there named Catherine there Oh. Pushing, pushing three bills, Yours maybe is five, 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 two. The like her pants is just so far up her ass. It was just cheeks for ages. Weeks, was, cheeks for weeks, cheeks for weeks. It was, uh, it was appalling. So, so wait a second. So we're talking about hot chicks and yoga pants, and you mentioned this one first. It's like, and you yes. know her name. You know her by name. Oh yeah, she's a client. No, I'm joking. Uh, Birthday <laughs> Brian's on a first name basis. No, when you go all the time, you get to you meet everyone, and uh, it's pretty cool. But it was um, just cheeks for weeks, man. There was just so many people there, regardless of the size. Some people they have their own gravitational pull. Some people were just <laughs> emaciated. <laughs> it was uh, interesting. And then the guys, some of the pants that the dudes oh, wear, or the shirts. Brian, Brian Beesman. Damn, he's fucking hot. No, anyway, it's just so, so weird. The short, short, the short shorts are in. 
short shorts with like a fucking right nut hanging out. It was Larry just, Birds. Yeah. The Larry Birds or, or Larry whatever Birds. the hell you want to call them. The John Snow is the John Stocktons. He still he still the wore the short shits when when everybody was always wearing the baggy baggy shorts. Yeah. Hey Frank Big Cocker is uh watching on Twitch. Hey Frank. What's up, Frank? Frank's pickle barrel ass. <laughs> 986. <laughs> But I don't see. Here's the thing, though, is like, I mean, everybody knows. And if you're a woman out there watching and you're at the let's just say you're out at the target with your man, right, with your boyfriend, your husband, whatever, and some chick walks past in, in, in some yoga pants, you can't get too mad at him. I mean, if he's sitting there staring and gawking, that's a different thing. But if the little glance, we have to do it. It's impossible not to do it. It's like a magnet. It's, we it's have amazing. to at least, at least it's almost like a challenge. Like I dare you to not look. And it's, 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 it's very hard to do. It's very hard. So don't get, get cut a little slack, cut them a little slack, you know, but here's the difference though. As soon as a hot chick comes into like eyesight, your wife or girlfriend notices too. So she starts looking at you to see if you're going to look at her. Mm -hmm. If there's a good looking dude coming down the, <laughs> down the store or something like that, it's like, we, we don't, we're not looking like, are you going to look at him? We don't give a shit. It's like, it's, it's a whole different thing, man. Whole different thing. That's men and women are different. You're damned. If you do, you're damned. If you don't. Yep. Yeah. It's just, it's fascinating to see some people's outfits at the gym. You have some people creeping in with some Birkenstocks on or Crocs, and you have other people are scantily clad and they don't give a fuck how big or small they are. It's just, it's definitely an adventure every time you go to the gym. So. But how do you get, how do you like work out when there's just ass cheeks all around? Um, I just put my headphones on, listening to some uh, Gizmachi. And oh, I, oh, that'll do it. <laughs> just plow ahead, baby. Just plow ahead. I go at 10 in the morning, so it's full of, uh, you know, unemployed mothers that don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> Is that part of the silver sneaker program that you're part of? Yeah. We go walk at the mall when it's cold. <laughs> Love dogs. <laughs> so you guys all discuss your Medicare supplement packages. It's fucking a real treat. Social security drop, everything. <laughs> I'm usually sure there that comes out on the John third of the Shane. month. John DeShane and I, we work out together. Cameron Brown, what's up, dude? What's up, Cameron? Cam, what's up? <laughs> uh, testicle says that Kurt's goatee is on point tonight. Looking good. Yeah, I'm a couple days from shaving. You're a couple of days from shaving, or it's been a couple of days since you sh uh, you shaved. I need, I need to shave. You need to. Okay. Need to. <laughs> discipline. A lot of men don't have <laughs> that type of discipline, Andy. I'm glad you do. Well, I mean, it's human or not human nature. It's it's nature itself. You know, if you're a gorilla, and a hot ass gorilla walks by, they're gonna look right. It doesn't matter. It's just nature. Mm -hmm. Especially at Brian's gym. Yeah, what gym do you go to? Go to uh, Big Sky. Big Sky, that's the name of it? <laughs> it's Big Sky, actually. <laughs> How there's, big? Some, there's some jack dudes there. And there's sometimes I'm just like, I'm looking at them. I'm like, God, Brian that guy's fucking, the fucking huge. Dudes. Brian keeps mentioning the guys before. I'm trying to talk about hot yoga pants, asses. And he keeps mentioning guys in short shorts, fucking ripped dudes coming in. All right. Oh, fucking... take a fucking gander here. Imagine going to the gym with Uncle Laser and just having him point out every pair of butt cheeks uh, walking past. Oh, take a fucking gander here. There was a, he a has video some videos. of him at the gym. Yeah. And every time he's doing like deadlifts, he keeps hitting his dong. <laughs> Is he back? <laughs> See, <laughs> Brian mentioned it in his dick. Sure, well, 
<laughs> Could I not mention his uncle Laser's cock? Is he packing heat? Apparently. Hmm. I think Uncle Laser is like 5'7", too. He's not a very tall dude. Yeah. That's why he wears those cowboy boots with the big the big, the big lifts in the butt in the back. With the Charizard belt buckle. Because it's fucking huge. <laughs> the Texas belt buckle. <laughs> the extinct alabasters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's hilarious. Oh, shit. He is my spirit animal. It's good stuff. All right, so let's talk. Stop talking about dongs at the gym. Let's talk about. You, you keep bringing the dongs up. <laughs> Don, right, I'm gonna. Say, I'm gonna say hi to everyone in the chat real quick. There you go. You guys don't mind? No. Everyone's here taking time out of their crazy night to hang out with us idiots. Hey Kurt, uh, I think Andy Carson, time, what's up, man? Trim, trim that tree again outside. Is my internet bad? Well, Brian, why don't you say hi to everyone in the chat? No, you're fine. You're Is good, it? bro. All right, maybe it, maybe it's my end. Beesman looks smooth as silk, and uh... let me pop I'll, out. I'll, I'll, pop shut back in. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Okay. Yeah, you're good, Kurt. Over the dongs. All right, sweet. So Kurt's gone. All right, I'll, I guess I'll do a quick roll call while Kurt's um, rebooting. Um, so, hello, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in tonight. Few people we have in attendance. We have Jay's girl, Patty Dill. Patty, thank you okay. again for license plate over the I can't, I can't really do it. There you go. Jay, where's your license plate? Oh, there it is. Uh, we have my man Joe Brown, Jay Santiago, James 5150. That's a very original name. What's going on, James 51? Thank you. 50, thank you for showing up. <laughs> James 51, thank you. <laughs> R two R three. Let's not talk about that shit. <laughs> oh shit! We have uh, Ron is here. We got our Who, head. Who's here? Who's here? <laughs> so can't drive fifty fives here. It must be a female. So hey, what's going up? We can't drive fifty five. Bookface user. Bookface user is in attendance. What's going on, Bookface? He likes um, seven over eight. Apparently. Who doesn't? Fan favorite. Absolutely. <laughs> Kurt doesn't like me tonight. I can tell. We got Mad Dog here. Surprise boner talking about hard-ons. What else would I be talking about? Come on. We got a uh, foot cake here. KXM Rock. Andy Carson. Test Tickle. What's going, Testy? Um, I, I think I said it already. R2, R3. I hope you, you're still working on that uh, Slipknot song. I want to see you fucking rip that thing up. Uh, Spiros, my favorite male Greek in attendance. What's up going on, Spiros? Spirit animal. <laughs> um, who else we got? Let me quickly scroll through. I saw my mom here. What's going on, mom? It hey, Bruce BHB. here, Mr. BHB Jr. Is that Bruce? Bruce. I haven't said that in a while. Is that Bruce? OU812. Yeah, OU812. We got the Regal Beagles here. Ed. Small mouth guy, Mr. BHB Jr. Thank you. What's going on? So quickly, if I missed you, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to do it real quick. So thank you again for hanging out. Steve Anderson. And what? Steve Anderson is here? He's here from the Southern Tip, Vancouver Southern, Island. Southern Tip. <laughs> Steve, we miss you, buddy. Hope all is well. Steve Anderson. And uh, Mojowski's here. Oh, John DeShay, my boy. I was working out for DeShane, trying to look good for him. So. Hey, Steve, I've been watching a lot of hockey, man. Fuck yeah, yeah. I have been. So, Jay, how's uh, your petition going? I got oh, 28 signatures, man. We're about, I'd say, uh, 100,000 short. I signed it. 100,000 petitions or dollars to pay for it? <laughs> no, dude, I found, I talked to um, one of the local uh, senators. Um, and he's like, they have so much money for that sports complex. And I just found out also they're putting in a fucking, they're doubling the soccer fields on that whole area. And they're also putting in an arcade and a water park. And I'm like, where the fuck's the fucking hockey rink? You assholes. So 
Little Beach doesn't really strike me as a huge hockey town, but you know, good luck with that. Yeah, well, people, there's a shitload of lacrosse around here, and anybody that has played hockey never wants to play lacrosse again. So let's get it going. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey Mojo. I mean, a, po a politician, a petition ain't going to really do shit anyway, you know, but whatever. But you're doing your civic duty, Jay. You tell them what you want. Yeah, now I just got to find an investor that has a, you know, couple billion dollars i signed that thing and they're probably like what's this dude in washington care if we have a uh, ice arena in south carolina you come to visit a lot and you and you bring your skates and every time you get here you're like i can't use them i brought them with me all the way across the country and i can't use them why did i bring these skates why did i bring the skates oh, no one man. likes hockey <laughs> uh brian Yes, sir. Did you, did you see the Olympics announced a couple new additions to the sport? I saw flag football. Yeah, how excited were you about that? Don't give a fuck. <laughs> I think it would be pretty cool, though, to see some of our athletes, like Tyree Kill, just blowing past some Serbians you know, on the Wait, football are they, field. Are they allowed to have NFL players <laughs> in the... My thing is, if you do football, like, let's do the football that we've been playing for the last 100 years, not uh, the football we've been playing for the last six years. Right? I agree. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Andy, thank you. Thank you, Andy. Big you see Big money. You Can you dive into that, Brian? That Andy Carson has gifted five under the bus network memberships. Yeah, I don't think he's given it to anyone yet. I think he's. Oh, okay. Wait, let me look. He just let me look. Thank you. Well, hold on. Actually, Mad Dog is now a member. Polly Walnuts, KD Lang is now a member. Wow. <laughs> Rob Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Puff EJ. Uh, I didn't even know there was a Puff EJ in attendance, but and then Larry Riker from Rikers Island. Good to see you. Nice and, and welcome to our channel membership. Welcome. Yes, Good deal. Okay, Murphy do you, does have a minor league baseball team. Yes, they do. They're uh, part of the Cubs organization. Yep. What's their name? The Pelicans, the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. Yep. Yeah. Kurt, what do you think about flag football being an Olympic event? I think it's stupid. <laughs> but <clears throat> I mean, I played football. I didn't play flag football, so I'm a little biased. Um, but who who tunes in to ESPN or whatever sports channel to watch flag football? I don't even know if they broadcast it. Well, people watch bowling. Like, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Hold, hold on a second. If people watch cornhole and cornhole, uh, cornhole championships, uh, rock skipping is another one. Where is it by really? Johnson Sausage. Yes, rock, rock skipping. Skip. Yeah. Holy shit! I like to skip you across a fucking lake. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing: when you're talking about the Olympics, it should be the best. Yeah. Of the best at that particular th flag football. I mean, you're taking out literally everything about real football you know what i mean it's like a it's like a dumbed down version and yeah obviously it's safer and well, people is there like football in nigeria there is I no <laughs> i doubt it <laughs> there might be they probably have the shirts from you know when um the super bowl champs are announced in the field and the team that loses they send that shit <laughs> to the third yep. world countries mm -hmm. they drop it with uh out of an airplane they do Dude, could you imagine imagine one of them coming over here and be like, wait a minute, you, you guys got all the Super Bowl winners wrong. <laughs> I got all the shirts. What are you talking about? <laughs> here we Flag go. Football? They must be guy. You're almost there, Jay. See? Just takes a little public support from the under the bus. We're good. From who? From who? Oh, I fell. I, I fucked up. Mikey Mojo 999 for the rink. 
<laughs> Thanks, man. Mikey's famous. Mikey signed a petition too. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hey, Walt. How you doing? <laughs> How's your wife? <laughs> uh, probably a sizzler or a golden corral. <laughs> Walt, deep throat, nice. deep throat in the, with a chocolate fountain from the top. Just, <laughs> Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Bathing in it. Yeah. Where's the fucking fountain? Kurt, do you relic anything new so Walt can rip you apart about it? or No, but I can't wait for him to flip me some more shit. <laughs> <laughs> Kick good deal. Really? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Walt, you motherfucker. Can we block him? <laughs> How do we block him? No, leave it up. We're, we're not that other channel. We don't block fucking people. On we don't block shit. Anyone. Unless they're spamming like porn websites that I'll try to visit later and see what's going on. Yeah. Got to keep the eye on the prize and focus on the show. Porn later. We don't block anything. <laughs> Oh my god, it's still there. Keep chugging them, Kurt. What else you got? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's it went uh in the app that we use, there's now a magic eraser. So Kurt, go back to that if you could. Yeah, I'll talk about that too. I got something to say. So um get Ryan's comment off the fucking thing. God damn it. So what I did, just to be safe, just in case YouTube for some reason had some weird algorithm, weird owl algorithm, I actually removed her nipples <laughs> with that magic eraser. But well, I... here's the thing. What? Now we can do um, animated backgrounds mm -hmm. in StreamYard. I went in there, and I was going to have the pumpkins and the skeleton hands move mm -hmm. across her dress. And put it as our background, but I noticed when I took the move the hands and breath or in pumpkins, there was no nipples. <laughs> See, I was like, okay, that looks weird. Can't do that. <laughs> no nipples. <laughs> Look like Brian at the gym in his tight white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking about putting like Beesman's face over each nipple, but I think that's like Beesman paste. Can we got to make pasties? Beesman pasties. We have them already. I just don't know if they're safe for animals. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, see now now Bozik wants that wants some candy corn. <laughs> well, Walt Delbeck is a fan of uh Beesman and I, but not Kurt. Thanks, Walt. You notice how you didn't get gifted channel membership? <laughs> <laughs> no, how do you give Walt a channel membership? <laughs> One for him and his wife. <laughs> that's great I love you Kurt though don't worry thank you Brian you're welcome Hellstorm make some under the bus cock rings we've discussed it in the works right now Jay's working on them yeah I'm trying them all out to see uh, you know testing them and then we'll sell them yeah Kurt, did you want to go into a little further the uh, the the canvas, the stuff that you're you're creating, or is that is that it? That was it. I was going to make the background, and make the hands move, but she was uh, she'd had some surgery. <laughs> I wanted to see your. I wish I could see your like expression on your face when you saw that there were no nipples there. Yeah, well, she true. actually the real the real the real nipples have. Uh, which we call it? She had piercings, hardware, nipple rings in there. Yeah. Let's see if I have the photo. Let's keep it there clean it. in the chat. There, OU eight one two. Come on. <laughs> can Ryan, I, um, you son of a bitch, Ryan? Can I put a picture in here? No, I can't. We're logged out. Are we? <laughs> We're logged out. <laughs> Too much. Log jammed. Uh oh. Um, 
So, yeah, we, we won't block anyone, Asus. It's not part of our nature. No. It's a free country. And it makes for good content. Absolutely. We're all about fun. Does she have nipple rings? Yeah, she's got them. See? If Laz came in here and started talking shit about Beesman, I would I'd be highlighting it. comments. I'd probably yeah. pleasure myself if he did. I'd start sure. sending him super chats. <laughs> you have a member, channel membership for Laz. <laughs> Are you blocked on Laz's channel? Last time I, yes. And I didn't even do anything wrong. I was just guilty by association. Because you hang out with Jay. <laughs> yeah, I the, watched, com- the company you I keep. watched one show in a year because he's supposedly unloading all this gear, which I don't think he's sold anything yet. And uh, <laughs> I guess I'm commenting with other people that are commenting about someone else that was on the show. And that person just went and blocked all the people that don't follow him, I guess. It was, it's bullshit. Yeah, John Saint says he's blocked. So I don't know if I'm blocked because I, I don't watch it anyway. You're not missing anything. <clears throat> that's, why, that's why I don't watch it. I don't think he blocked me. I, don't well, know get I, in there. I didn't do anything. When's he do his next show? Get in there and say hi. I will. <laughs> what would you say? Am I blocked? Hey, <laughs> hey guys, am I blocked? If you can see this, let me know. <laughs> yeah, uh, Laz wasn't the one that blocked everyone. It was someone else. I, th- I think you could put two and two together to figure out who who was. <laughs> Emotional damage. <laughs> that too. Emotional damage. Yeah. Anyway, Kurt. I've never blocked anyone on my phone. Um, never blocked anyone on social media. Like, come on. It's like ballless, I guess, in my opinion. I guess we're going there. I'm going to go there. Go there. Ballless? I think when someone blocks someone, it's like they can't take the heat. So they just take the easy way out by blocking them, you know? Mm. I, and I think that's bullshit. It's, uh, it's ballless, in my opinion. You know, Smitty is blocked as well. Smitty's the nicest guy in the world. I know. He's the man. Who doesn't love him? How are you going to block Smitty? It's fucking, he's doing the show is in a 108 degree fuck hut. He's doing <laughs> the Lord's work up there in Canada. I mean, sweat come his on. Ba- <laughs> sweating his baguettes off. And you're going to block him? <laughs> Get out of here. My man likes Slayer. You can't block someone who likes Slayer. God, we should get some free Schmitty t shirts. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Schmitty. I'm going to work on this shit tomorrow. Smitty, <laughs> send me a picture. <laughs> I'll forward it to my guy. I mean, come on, puppies. dude. If I ever met him, I'd pick him up and give him a big old kiss right on his greasy cheeks. Like, I love him. <laughs> his you know? greasy cheeks. Well, he's sweating greasy. in the butt hut. Oh, that's, that's true. The butt hut. <laughs> yeah. I bet it's like forty in there right now. Smitty, yeah. are you are you in the are you in the uh <laughs> in the stabbing cabin? The stabbing cabin, yes. <laughs> B's been blocked me. What is this? B's been blocked on Tony's channel. I never see your messages. No. Yeah, you have to you have to go to live chat. Boner is not a right? popular word that's encouraged by uh, YouTube or StreamYard. So, yeah, I don't have anyone blocked. Jay Santiago, I love you so much. Smooches. I didn't block you. You just got to go to live chat. Then you can see me. Smitty generally will let everyone know to make sure you go to live chat or you won't see my shit. So. Right. Yeah. I usually keep it off live chat so I don't have to read Boner Jam's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blocking him, but not blocking him. Yeah. Until people start saying hi and highlighting comments that he's talking about me and then i ended up going to live chat because i want to talk shit back to him that's the way it works and kurt always loves when i was like kurt sucks dicks with his butthole then he's like all right i'm here i'm here Brian, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. we got ashley mo ashley mo howard in the uh chit chat now what's up ash <laughs> oh man Anyway, I've talked enough shit for the night. No, you haven't. 
So who wanted to, does anybody want to mention um, the no. thing we were texting the other day about um, Brian at the gym? <laughs> but no, yeah, let's go, let's go back to that. You know, he had to be snapping pictures. He just doesn't want to send them. Did you try? No. Did you pr- not- did you try to like pick up your phone? Oh, I gotta I gotta respond to so and so. Yeah, this claim. I gotta get this claim sent off. Yeah, like, like it's a sprinkler in the front. No, <laughs> no I'd be excommunicado. Like if it was John Wick in there, they'll throw me out. So I like the gym. Well, I was I was gonna mention um a certain musician the other day on Instagram and social media, I guess gave his opinion on something mm. i mean i listen mm. i don't want to get into the topic of what it was because i'm all about everybody having their own opinion and their own point of view and that's great but well it depends on what what it is i guess you know <laughs> but no i mean that's isn't that what makes the the fucking world a Go great around. place right it's like if everybody agreed, if everybody liked the same shit and disliked the same shit, how boring would it be? Right. You know what I mean, what, what, what? That's why the show is cool because the three of us hate each other. We make it work. You know, all the tension comes right on the show, and it's good to go. But uh, Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree, who I am a huge Porcupine Tree fan. I love his music. I think he's a talented sob. Um. But there's just something, and listen, it's, I'm not, I don't want to talk about the topic or the reasons or whatever, or his opinion, because that's, that's beside the point. But it's just when musicians and anybody else feels like they're important enough or um, bigger than everybody else. We're like, hey, I want the world to know my opinion about this and how I stand. And it's like, Dude, you're a fucking musician. Yeah, you might be a bright guy. You might be a smart guy. But why? I just don't understand the ego of, like, writing this huge, long statement. And I think if he starts it out with, I'm putting out this statement because people keep asking my opinion. So what? So what if they keep asking your opinion about something? Shut the fuck up. Like, why are you so important? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the day, newscasters didn't give their opinion. They just stated the facts and gave you information. And now it's shifted. CNN, Fox News, where now they're sneaking in their opinion or their stance on something. I don't know about back sneaking in. Day, it's pretty blatant. <laughs> that they're pretty yeah, exactly. But remember back yeah. in the day, Walter Cronkite and Peter Jennings, they would just tell you the facts. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I told you guys in the thread, these people are just using the, the soapbox to, and their fame, to get their opinion across. And if I'm following uh, uh, someone in the music industry or someone in the sports industry, I'm following them for their music or for their sports. I don't give a fuck about their religion or their their social stance or their political opinion. I don't want to hear it. And I don't think anyone else does. They just... They abuse their fame, I guess, is a good way to put it. Yeah. Right? I, I like couldn't Dave. agree more. Oh. I Yeah, I just, I do not give a fuck. I, I think it's even worse if they go to, let's say, their band website mm. and they start spouting off shit. Who cares? <laughs> like, Who I, fucking cares? It, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I really don't understand why anyone would sit there and pontificate and whoa holy shit my brain is getting hot people just obloviating about fucking stuff they don't fully understand and just want look at me this is what i think and you're gonna have to take it like no one cares what i think not a fucking soul i don't even think my kids even care so why (laughs) am i gonna go on to social media and start spouting off some shit that can piss some people off like my fans no one cares whoops wrong one it's just, you know, I'm ill-equipped to start spewing ignorant shit, especially political stuff. I do insurance. That's all I know, really. And I barely even know that. So who cares? <laughs> but I, I think as well as I've, I've said this a couple of times before in the past where 
you know, I understand you have your opinion. That's great. But when you are a rock star or a huge band or a huge artist or celebrity, whatever you are, regardless of the position you take publicly, you're splitting your fans right down the middle, you know? And some people have that in them where like you put out a certain thing and they're like, well, fuck that guy because he believes this. And, you know, I think that's kind of stupid too, to a certain extent. But again, it's like, why would you want your fans? Because that's what happens, dude. You go into the comment section of any of this shit and now the fans are arguing with each other. Right. And I think as, as a musician, the last thing I would want to do is the few hundred Gizmachi fans there are in the world to, to fucking argue with each other about something that I have nothing, I'm, I have no part of it. Right. If you want to argue about what song is the shittiest or what solo I fucked up on, that's great. You can argue about that shit all you want. We just got to get Mike Balls here for that. Yeah, yeah. he'll tell you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> See? Exactly, Jay Santiago. I don't have many fans, any fans, so I can fucking say whatever the fuck I want. Only fans. <laughs> I mean, unless, listen, unless you're like, that's the type of band you are, if you're a political band or if you're this or that, you know, and that's what you hang your hat on. Okay. You know, that's fine. But certain certain artists are like, I don't want to fucking hear it. Agreed. Why is your opinion more important than, than anybody else's opinion? It's not. Right. It's your opinion. Right. And we all know I love Corey Taylor. Love me some Corey Taylor. I do not give a fuck what he thinks. Don't care. Well, that's that's how the whole thing. I mean, if you go in any comment, especially on Instagram... Any music-related news, even if it has nothing to do with Slipknot, nothing to do with anything, what does Corey Taylor think? There's, there's like every fifth comment is, what does Corey Taylor think? Yeah. And we have uh, a super, super duper chat from Spiros. Kurt, you want to get to that? What I like about this is it's a guitar channel where we hardly ever talk about guitars, but everyone still likes it. Big bucks! Trying- Big money! We try to slip it in where we can, just like Boner at the gym. <laughs> just slipping it in. Also Thanks, in the Chris. chat, just getting here. And, oh, wait, let me arm the arm day. Beep. Quentin James. Beep. Hope your knee's feeling better, buddy. What happened to his knee? <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. oh, he's a one knee art. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he just drops to one knee. Yeah, he he's does doing thinking. Uh, he does the thinking man while he sucks cock. <laughs> doing the Tim, Tim Tebow. <laughs> love you, Quentin. You're the man. If it was anyone else, I wouldn't have said that. So love you, man. Oh uh, shit. But did you guys see Pete Davidson on uh Saturday Night Live on no. this weekend? Fuck that guy. I hate him so much. Yeah, he went on a real quick political stance bullshit thing about what's going on in the Middle East. And in my opinion, like Save it, you know. Yeah, people, go, people go to watch Saturday Night Live to get away from that shit. Like, yeah. it, it, don't bring it to people's uh, living room at in the West Coast, eleven o'clock at night. You know, right? People want to get away from that shit. They don't need that stuff shoved in their face. Like, and, and Pete Davidson's such a fucking clown show too. Fuck that guy. He's another celebrity I would like to slap in the face. We you can make it slap him with his own dick because I heard he's got a fucking massive. Matt oh, Johnson, yeah, girthy as well. Johnson, <laughs> he's got a massive Johnson. And if that's the case, good for him on the girthy cock, but no one gives a fuck what you think. Yeah, I can SNL go on all day about that. How long? How when was the last time SNL was good? Maybe when like Peyton Manning was on, yeah, right? Man, the good old days. I don't know. I think a lot of the, I, don't, I don't fucking know. It's stu- It's so stupid. Yeah. Agreed. Maybe we should talk about some guitars and some music tonight. What do you guys think? Yeah. What's going on uh, personally with gear? You guys got anything on the horizon or Jay? What are you get about to return? I ain't got shit. <clears throat> anything recently? Let's talk about gear. Nobody has any new shit. So okay, let's fucking. Move no, on with music because Kurt lately you said you've been playing, right? 
Yeah, a little bit. Probably about 30, 40 minutes a day. All right. So l- let me ask you both this. So if you pick up the guitar, what are you are you playing like scales? Or are you just working the fingers out? Or are you going into and you're playing some shit? And if you are, what are you playing? Yeah, I'm not playing anything specific. I actually talked to Jay about this the other day. I just go through the motions. Go through some scales, go through some chords, do some bar chords, just strum. I mean, I don't even plug in most of the time. So for me, it's just... Um, well, in order to plug into your amp, you got to pull the fucking guitar cable out of your asshole. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Kirk got that brown guitar cable, man. That's that's that limited edition shit. You only get that at Kurt's house. Yo, Jace, go anyway. that out. <laughs> what? I met Thrash Royalty last Friday on his birthday, Joey Belladonna. That's fucking. Yeah, we. Uh, I met Joey. I think Jeannie and I both met Joey Belladonna on his birthday. No, not on his birthday though. So you got that right. on. You got that on me. But he was super nice, super cool. He's a huge Minnesota Vikings fan. Obviously, I'm a huge Bears fan. So we talked about football for a few minutes, and uh, you know, it was it was cool as shit. He was awesome. He's one of those guys, he's one of those guys that you know everybody's met a musician or somebody who, when you're talking to him, you know that they you could see it in their eyes that they don't give a fuck. They're barely paying attention. They're looking over there. They're looking at who else and shit like that. And you have like half of their attention, maybe. Talking to Joey Belladonna was like he seemed like he genuinely gave a shit. Who did you was, meet that didn't give a fuck? God, that's a good question. I don't know. Does anybody else have an answer for that one? I have to say in the metal community or the hard rock, everyone I've met has been super cool, super nice, down to earth, and... If you're saying, hey, you know, I really enjoy what you do or super appreciative of you being a fan. So I've not had a bad interaction. Can't think of one. The only person that pissed me off I ever met was uh, Danny Wood from New Kids on the Block. And they said he looked like a monkey to his face. I was also, <laughs> I was also nine years old. <laughs> so so he probably didn't give a fuck. No, he's like, go fuck yourself. I'm not giving you an autograph. I'm like, I don't want your autograph anyway. And he took my paper, signed it. He still signed it? He did. I sent that shit straight to my sister, and I'm like, fuck new kids on the block. It would have been better if he wrote, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I should have done that. The handful of autographs we signed, I should have wrote, fuck you. Who <laughs> 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 farted? That would have been good. Yeah. What about you, Kurt? Did you meet anyone that you knew at that moment they just did not give a fuck that you were there? No, everyone I've ever met that's been famous has been really cool um but i kind of always take that approach of don't bombard them with the shit they're famous for Mm. you know whether they're a baseball player or a rock star or a football player (laughs) hey so you like pussy Uh, i actually met (laughs) jerry cantrell um oh did you he was in the town i i live in he's he was playing a solo like show at a small club and he just bombed out right out of the, after the set, into the back. So I went out into the alleyway, and he was sitting there smoking a cigarette. So I went, walked up to him, and started shooting the shit. <laughs> 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 like 10 minutes. And talked about hunting, talked about the Northwest, you know, because he's from Seattle. And just, we didn't talk, in, I didn't talk Alice in Chains. I didn't talk, you know, music. And he actually sat and was just talking with me because I wasn't fanboying him. At you the know. end of the at the end of the conversation, where you're like, so you here watching uh, what band are you here to see? <laughs> Did you pull are out you one? <laughs> yeah, he, he ended up in a limo after we got done talking and left. Like left all of his gear, left his whole crew there. But yeah, super good. cool, like really down to earth guy. That's cool. So, well, Jay, you said you met or you were on tour with Head PE. Did you talk to the singer? I knew that the bassist intervened that you had to get the fuck out of the uh, yeah the dressing room, right? Oh, yeah. But did you even speak to him? Was he douched you or did he even get that far? With the singer? Yeah. I don't think I said maybe hi a couple times, like walking past, but uh, never really spoke to this. Don't even know what he looks like, really. <clears throat> a stroke. Yeah. 
No, I mean they were they were cool to us except for that the one time with the bass player telling us to get out of the dressing room. But that was uh, about it. You know who else was really cool? Vernon Reed. We saw uh, Living Color at the Chance. <clears throat> it's probably two thousand two ish, something like that, two thousand three. And he literally talked to Jeannie and I for like forty five minutes, like we were separate from the whole fucking group, you know, because you know it was it was cool as shit. Was you it know? because he was hitting on Jeannie, or because yeah, he was not, actually a cool dude? No, that, that's a cool thing too. Is that like when you meet certain people, you could tell. Like when we saw Fear Factory at the Chance, one of the roadies came. I was walking out with Jeannie. And one of the roadies came right up and said, hey, do you want to come on the bus with uh, with Dino? <laughs> right? Dude, just like right in front of me, like didn't give a shit. Yeah, no, 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 not you, her. Yeah, and Jeannie was like, okay, and just went right in there. I was like, I guess I'll drive home by myself. No, I'm joking. So, uh, <laughs> she, yeah. finally came up. <laughs> she finally showed up. Was she um, going to go to the buffet with them? Was like, yeah, what was she... <laughs> what is... Fuck so, uh, Did that really happen? Oh, yeah. So the roadie came up to Jeannie right in front of you and says, Hey, would you like to? And basically, the, would you like to come on the bus with Dino? Yeah, or come hang out on the bus thing, with Dino. Right. That's what it was. So that's what they did after each show. Like either one or two of their roadies would go around asking, Hey, do you want to come out with Bert? Or do you want to go on the bus with Bert or whoever the fuck? Bert Bacharach. Yeah. Kurt. Kurt. <clears throat> so, yeah. Wow. Mm hmm. Yeah, but Vernon Vernon Reed was super cool, like super cool. That was probably the most in depth conversation I've ever had with like, you know, a guitar player that I respected or musician, I guess. How did his penis taste? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if she could find it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Patty. Man. Thank you, Patty. My band went on tour with Head PE twice, even did a song featuring Jared. Dude keeps himself. Most of the bands, band guys were awesome. Yeah. What, what year was this? Majestic PB and J Cat? Because this would have been 2004 or five. 2005, I believe. We did a, I forget how long we went out with those guys. But it was cool. They had two cool albums. Everything else is not so good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, because I remember checking them out for the first time because they were playing seven strings. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Man, 10 years after. <laughs> 10 years after we were with those dudes. Yep. I think Sonny Mayo, that was in Snot and also in Seven Dust for a period of time, played for them. And I think he wrote their cool shit. So. Well, I don't think anybody that was in the band back in the mid 2000s is in that band anymore. It's just the singer. It's like, it's yeah. his fucking band. It is. Yep. Well, Beesman, do you want to get to that one topic that uh, we kind of touched on, glossed sure. over? Yeah, I was going to mention yeah. that. Give us the backstory. The uh, Slipknot. So this yeah. is the Slipknot uh, Mushroom Head feud? No, the fucking Balloon Knot feud. Yes. <laughs> the Leather Cheerio. <laughs> so uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, Slipknot and Mushroom Head kind of came out around the same time. Uh, Mushroom Head's from, I think, Cleveland. Right, Jay? Yes. And Slipknot is from Des Moines, Iowa. So both middle of nowhere but they're both masked bands that has a plethora of people in the band. And so basically mushroom head thought that slipknot cop their style. And I don't think it was really with the band members themselves. I think it was just more of a rivalry between fans, kind of like sports. Hmm. And, and um, there was some shit that went down. So I, I saw an article today that was on Blabbermouth because the original singer of slipknot, he before Corey Taylor, um bct he is now in uh, <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> he's in australia on tour and first of all he, he is not thin and he's wearing like a dominatrix outfit i, I don't even know what's going on right now 
Jay, I don't know if you want should to pull we, up that article. Pull up the article. I should probably should have fucking done that. Yeah. The gimp. But he was interviewed talking about the rivalry at the beginning of the both of their careers. And um and I, I sent this to Jay, and Jay's like, you know what? Gizmachi was part of the reason why that feud ended. And I was like, no shit. So I would love to hear Jay elaborate a little further on what went down and uh what happened. All right, well, let me uh share the screen here. <clears throat> As you're sharing the screen, Mushroom Head's not very good. Slipknot's amazing. So that's all I'll say. <laughs> Original Slipknot singer Anders Kolsefeski weighs in on Mushroom Head feud. The hell is he wearing? Yeah, exactly. It's like the candy corn girl's that's nipple. electrical tape on his head, isn't it? I, dude, I, I don't know. All right, well, whatever. We'll fucking, you know. My man's in his 50s just looking like just a fucking Dude. turd wrapped in plastic. It's not even attractive. But anyway, keep going, please. Brian, real quick before Jay goes, did you like him as a front man? No. You didn't? No. Okay. No, they're one of those bands that if they would have kept this guy, nobody would have ever fucking heard Slipknot. Yeah. He has no melody. Corey Taylor can sing and scream. He um, brought Slipknot to a whole different level. This guy would not have done it. So Jay's right. Kind of like Mike well, Patton with uh, Faith No More. If you ever listen yeah. to the stuff before Mike Patton, it's like, wow, this yeah. guy is terrible. Van, mm -hmm. Van Vader, look at it, Metalworks. He looks like Van <laughs> <laughs> Mad Dog, too. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> All right, so I'll try. Sometimes, especially with, like, the touring and stuff like that, my mind is not really, it's not a steel trap like uh, like Mike Ball sometimes is. So a lot of this stuff is, you know, the years I have wrong on some stuff and uh, some details that I'm missing. So back in about 2003, somehow our singer Sean at the time, he got connected with um, the drummer from Mushroom Head. His name is Skinny, right? Was I don't even know if he's in the band anymore. I don't think he is. And he is. We, we were recording demos at the time. And Sean actually went to Ohio because Skinny had a studio and recorded vocals and mixed some of Gizmachi's older demos. So then when we kind of got in talks with <laughs> Clown from Slipknot to, you know, the whole record deal thing, um, we obviously still kind of kept in contact with Skinny from Mushroomhead. Well, fast forward a little bit. Um... Uh, Clown wanted us to really like to go on tour and stuff like that and really like leave the tri state area, so to speak. So, Mushroom Head was cool enough to say, Hey, we'll bring you out with us. So, we did a tour with Mushroom Head. We were just before we even got signed or anything. And at the <laughs> time, there was still, you know, it was, I think Brian and, and Mike Ball said it too, is like the whole feud with Mushroom Head and Slipknot was a lot of it was media driven you know and they were young at the time so things were said in the media and in interviews and shit like that and there was this whole thing of like you know <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking me up man i can't concentrate sorry this is hard enough as it is to recall all this shit dude it's like fucking 20 years ago and i'm like oh my god what happened then so my time frame of a lot of, or timeline of a lot of things can be fucked up. So anyway, we do this small tour with Mushroom Head. They were cool as shit. And then we end up getting signed. We ended up going out. And Mushroom Head still kept bringing us on tours. We, we did like three or four decent tours with those guys. And they were always cool as shit. And we would always like, you know, try to, do the olive branch thing like you because we were always talking in contact with sean or uh, with clown from slipknot saying hey you know these mushroom head guys like they're cool you know blah 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 but nothing ever ever happened you know it was like just whatever so in 2005 or whatever it was we did a um the slipknot uh subliminal versus tour we did like what two weeks or 10 days for 13, whatever the hell it was. So we played in Cleveland, Ohio. So after the show is over, 
And Peabody's is in Cleveland, Ohio, I believe, as well. So we've played Peabody's before this as well. It's a small club. It's got a cool bar upstairs and shit anyway. So after the show is over, everybody from Slipknot, everybody from Gizmachi, all the bands go to Peabody's. Well, obviously, we're in contact with the Mushroom Head guys. Like, hey, we're going over to Peabody's. Slipknot's coming. Like, why don't you guys fucking come? Like, you know? So next thing you know, everybody's upstairs. Everybody's having a good time. Next thing you know, fucking dudes from Slipknot and Mushroom Head are like fucking doing shots with each other. And it's like, this is fucking awesome. And I'm thinking like, how cool would it be to have like a masked mayhem tour? You know, like Slipknot and Mushroom Head touring and shit like that. So to me, it was almost like, like we didn't know what was going to happen at first. You know, Slipknot showing up to a bar on Mushroom Head's home turf. You know, like... But I ended up being cool. Everybody was everybody was cool with each other. And to me, that kind of squashed the whole thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So indirectly, I believed Gizmachi was... Because uh, when I was reading that article, you know, not that I expected to see it, but I was like, wouldn't it be Maybe. cool somewhere in here? Like somebody would mention, you know, in 2005 on the Subliminal Versus tour, uh, both bands met up at you know, a local fucking bar in, in Cleveland and, uh, you know, whatever. But, That's awesome. Yeah. So was every member of Slipknot there? So yeah, like Joey uh, was hanging out with Skinny and... um, I can't remember if every single member of both bands was in there. You know, because that's what, fucking 17 a couple, dudes. A couple thousand guys, yeah. Yeah. So I remember like Paul Gray being in there. Um, Jim Root was in there. Corey, like most of the band was in there so mm-hmm. but i mean it was cool to see it you know that's awesome Obviously, no masks and they're in their just regular street gear yep like yep. i wonder how that affected their fandom you know they could go somewhere and people didn't know who they were right back yeah, then when, back in the day like you know when slipknot came out i for probably a couple of years i didn't know what any of them looked like until I think Stone Sour dropped the video for Bother. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's what Corey Taylor looks like? Holy shit. That was years in. Like, I was a huge Slipknot fan. I had no fucking clue. And I think that was pretty cool. Kind of like right now, Sleep Token. No one knows who they are, or what they look like. Or when Ghost came out initially, no one knew who the singer was. And then I think there was a lawsuit. And that's how everyone found out it was Tobias Forge. So... Well, Brian, I'm sure you've seen the photo before, but when we recorded the imbuing, which Clown produced, we were doing like, you know, they were taking pictures of the band with Josh Wilbur, who produced, who engineered it in Clown. And in all the photos, except for the ones that like we had to keep for ourselves, but any of the ones that like got sent out to people, like Clown has a, has his hand like in front of his face. So you can't, mm-hmm. you know, he, he was like doing this shit. So you couldn't wow. see his face. Yeah. Yep. I thought it was pretty cool they did that for a while. Now they don't give a fuck. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Everyone knows who it is, so. Yep. Remember on yeah. um what was that that uh MTV had that Ozfest, that contest for Ozfest uh show. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, there was um shit. Why do I think it's like Mantis or something was like the band that won? We toured with those guys. Did you? Mhm. Yeah, I think that was the band that won. But yes, I, I remember that. It was awesome. Yep. And there was that one kid from I forget what band it was that got thrown off because he went outside of the of the bus and pretended to be clown from Slipknot and was signing autographs as him. And they found out about well, found out about it. it's on fucking we got a, a camera crew watching him do it. What a dumb asshole. Funny story about Mantis. So the tour with them, it was the um Xbox 360 came out. It was that November, right? Fucking freezing. Anyway, so those guys, they were cool. Don't get me wrong, but they had an RV. That there's an RV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the whole tour, we're like, we're like three quarters, probably almost all the way through the tour at this point. I never got invited onto their RV to hang out or anything, which was cool. I don't, I don't give a shit. It's not like I'm out there. Hey, is anybody going to fucking invite? No, I don't give a shit. But Jimmy, anyway. Jimmy got invited, right? Did he? Uh-huh. I don't know either. Is there, is there a, a 
anything about that? No, no Jimmy's the man. I love Jimmy. So oh, I just wanted okay. to bring him up. Go ahead. So anyway, I never got invited onto their RV, which, which I, like I said, I don't give a shit. It doesn't bother me. So the night Xbox 360 came out, I sat in the rain outside of a fucking Best Buy and waited for the store to open at 7 a.m. and got a fucking Xbox 360 and two fucking in games. Middletown? No, we were in, um, shit, Buffalo or something? Uh, Buff- yeah, we were in Buffalo, New York, and it was fucking freezing. It was the end of November, you know? So anyway, I sat outside in the freezing rain to get an Xbox 360. Well, I planned ahead because I bought a fuck. No, no, I know what it was. So I'm sitting there, and I think we only had two days left on the tour. So I had to, like, I was keeping watch of this Xbox 360 in the in the van, you know? making sure nobody fucking breaks in to steal it or whatever. Well, they find out, because they had an RV, they had a TV in the fucking thing. Well, they find out that I bought an Xbox 360. Oh, Jay, oh, dude, come on, the, come on the RV, bring the Xbox, let's fire it up. I'm like, you got, I fucking, I call them right down on. I'm like, I'm not, fuck you guys. I'm not, yeah, you're you know, everyone's friend yeah, now. Yeah, now I get invited when I got an Xbox? I'm not sitting in the <laughs> box, fuckheads. So you said that, what would they say? They were, we were laughing about it, but, you know, last thing, I, yeah, bring it on a fucking RV on a young band and on a tour, and it's going to get broken, it's going to get stolen, it's going to get fucking beer spilled on it, go fuck yourself. You'll get the you know, red when ring you guys, of death. The red <laughs> ring of death, that's right. Just leave that shit on the tour bus or on the RV while you guys play. Don't worry, we got you. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Yep. That's so cool. Yeah. Couldn't wait to it. fucking get home, dude. That was like the only tour ever. Where I was like, I can't wait for fucking this shit to get over, so I can play my Xbox. Yep. Yep. Uh, remember all the hacks to try to fix the red ring of death? Wrap put it a in fucking a towel. towel, or put pennies on this fucking deal inside. There was all kinds of weird shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Quinn, oh. you'll never get blocked, man. No, hell no. You're the man. Let me remove this stupid shit now. So yeah, that's um that's our little story about how Gizmachi is in a small way. Just making the world a better place. Yep. Just bringing yep. people together. I mean, because we wanted about it. We wanted that shit to happen. You know? Like that would have been fucking awesome for for those guys. Cause then it's like, hey, you got you gotta bring us with you now. Cause we were kind of the uh the olive branch for you guys, right? Yeah. So, Jay, at what point did you realize that this was the end, or you weren't <laughs> going to you were going to take a break? I know kids and marriage and all that thing; those things get in the way. But you mean in point, life or band? No, with Gizmachi. At what point did you know it was time Jay, to? At what point take did you, did you? <laughs> Never mind. Um, because you were at you know you went went at it hard for. How many years? He still yeah. goes at it hard. Still go at it hard. Wait till the show's over and fucking I turn this camera off. Um, <laughs> you call that uh, hard? Call that a limp noodle? <laughs> well, when I'm here by myself, it's it's whatever I want it to be. <clears throat> so, Jimmy, our drummer, had wrist problems, right? Oh, that's right. So, he needed, obviously, to take care of his wrists, stop jerking off, and he wanted to play Warcraft more than he wanted to tour the world. Hey, Jimmy, this ain't about your fucking wrist. <laughs> <laughs> you better be wearing a cup. <laughs> so, if anybody's heard our music, um, if you listen to it, the drums are obviously the most intricate, complicated shit of, in the whole band. It's mm-hmm. If we didn't have him as a drummer... You know, we wouldn't be as uh, exciting as we probably aren't anyway. So when he went when he went down with an injury, uh, we got a drummer from fucking Kentucky to fill in, and he did great, really good actually. And then finally, when it came time for like to ask him to join the band, we were about to start a tour. We had like ten days. He came in, he flew back in to rehearse for the tour, and like ten days before the tour started, he fucking. I wake up in the morning. He's gone. He's fucking gone. <laughs> in the back of your mind, were you thinking, "Is this gonna work?" Or well, was no. he like, was he, he like, he had done he like was- four tours already with us? 
So, oh, okay. yeah. So it was like, well, all right, cool. He's coming back to rehearse. We're going to go back out, you know? And at the time, like Jimmy was, Jimmy told us like, we're done. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I don't want to tour anymore. So like, all right, well, let's, let's ask Chad to join. And he said yes. And then he fucking flew out. And after a couple of days, you know, cause he was staying with me at, at my parents' house at the time. And uh, I remember, I remember cause he was staying in the, in the guest room upstairs and my bedroom was downstairs. I remember my, my dad came down in the morning. He's like, Hey, Jason, yeah, is Chad down here with you? No, well, he's not up here. <laughs> I still remember yeah. how my dad said it almost like comical, right? Well, he's not up here. Yeah. And there's peel out marks in the driveway. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. One, I found out later that um, Jimmy and one of our other friends picked him up at like fucking two in the morning and drove him to the airport and he flew home. Really? Yeah. I didn't so know. Irish could buy you and you didn't say a word. Did you do you know why now and, that he and quit, the drummer or? and the drummer that Chad Kate Phil, you know, took over for is the one who who brought him to the airport. Um was he using Jimmy's kit or do you have his own kit? Well, at the, at that time he he had his own kit. Um so yeah, so we had to that was a whole fucking mess. Yeah, too. Why yeah. did he leave? So he had anxiety issues, right? Don't we all? And well, yeah. So he was dating a girl for like fucking eight years, and all of a sudden, like when he came out to rehearse for this tour, this said tour that we were about to leave on, he couldn't for five days or whatever it was. He could not get a hold of her, and. Come, we come to find out that yeah, she was ended up ended up banging somebody else and fucking left him or whatever. So he was like devastated for. I should probably I shouldn't be telling anybody this shit. Oh fuck! He should have anyway. stayed. He Everyone, stayed. look um, him up and send your condolences. No, dude, this this was uh, uh, two thousand and seven, two thousand six or seven. And who were you going to go on tour with? Do you remember? Like, Part was of it all to say, who the fuck was it? Mike Balls, I remember. Balls. <laughs> Might have been Gojira. I don't fucking remember. But th dude, this is before they were huge. And you had to call it off? Or was like, yeah, we had, we had to cancel the tour. Anyway, oh, we had to cancel that shit. And then we got another drummer from um, Ohio <laughs> who was actually friends with the Mushroom Head guys. He was, he was a badass, too. Um... But what happened with him is like he he came in, rehearsed for a tour. That no no what what the fuck oh yeah rehearsed for a tour that never happened, and then he was here for like two months, and he fucking went through his entire life savings staying here, with or in New York with us, and he said the same thing is like guys and then all, oh yeah all of a sudden it's like hey we're t calling like the booking age the record label like hey. When it when is a tour happening? We we have a drummer living with us, like, you know what's going on. So all of a sudden, like after he was here for like two months, they're like, "Well, we want you guys now to write a record." And it's like, "What the fuck?" So he kind of got like, you know, I get it. He got fed up and he was like, "Guys, I can't stay here any longer without like making some kind of money and going on tour or whatever." So he fucking split. And then I think another ten months went by of us trying to find a drummer through message boards, through contacts in the, you know, oh, we I tried out a couple of guys. Yeah. The one guy we tried out, Jason Bittner from shadows fall. Look him up. <laughs> he, yo, no, he, he was, he's cool as shit. He's cool as shit. <laughs> funny. I'll get back to the funny story about Jason Bittner. When we were on that, uh, slipknot, uh, tour, it was shadows fall as well with the lamb of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So we were staying at the Mandalay Bay. I'm gonna. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging right now, but we stayed one night at the Mandalay Bay. The next morning, we woke up, Mandalay and there's Bay. this wave pool outside. Right, fucking beautiful. So we're all there. We go, and it's the me, Chris, Jimmy, and Balls in the wave pool, like together. And we look over, and there's Jason Bittner, just wow. by himself, like right. So you know, we talked to him before. It wasn't like we he never met us or whatever, right? So he's like, you know. <laughs> put, put his hair back with the water and shit. So we're Love looking you. at him. We're looking at him. We're like probably 15, 20 feet away, right? So we're looking at him kind of like to get his attention. 
So finally, like he fucking looks at us and he realizes like, so he comes over. He's like, I was like, who the fuck are these four fucking, you know, whatever, staring at me, you know, he's four fucking, it's like, I see pool. four guys just staring at me, like fucking rinsing my hair off. And he started, I don't know, it was a funny story. Anyway, so he recommends this guy, this drummer. He's like, oh, I got the perfect drummer for you. Get a hold of the guy. He comes out, shows up in this big pickup truck. He's got his drums in the back of the pickup truck, right? So the way the band room was set up is like the drums are in one corner. It's almost like everybody kind of has a corner, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, the guy shows up. Well, his fucking, he has two kick drums. Well, no, he, no, I'm sorry. He had one kick drum, but he had this huge kick drum pedal. You know, if any drummers are out there watching, you know, you get the double kick pedal and there's a bar, right, that connects it. Yeah. Well, hit the fucking bar was like this, this far apart. So he's like, hold on, let me try to let me see if I can do this. He needed so much fucking room for his bass drum. Oh, so he his his kit had to be out from the corner of the wall. Oh. <laughs> yes. So he, 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 had to set up, he had to set up his drum kit in the middle of the fucking room. And it was so bad. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever played music with somebody, like when you try somebody out or whatever, and it's so terrible that you have to laugh. So as soon as we start playing, I forget what the fuck song we even started playing. We start playing it, and I, I make eye contact, which was the first mistake. Whenever you don't want to laugh at something, do not make eye contact with one of your friends because it's fucking <laughs> game over. My game balls. Over. Yeah. So I make contact with fucking, and all of a sudden, heads down, we're fucking cracking up, laughing. And the worst thing, splits. <laughs> it's just it's just fucking this far away. And it was just bad, you know? And the worst thing about that is having to tell somebody that, uh, you know, we're not interested or whatever. It's, it's a shitty thing. Well, you were not interested in his double bass playing abilities. Dude, you're going to, we don't get big stages to fucking, play on as it is and you're drunk you, you know, know <laughs> you know the first you know five minutes if it's going to work or not you know the first five seconds you really yeah. do you know especially with like that kind of music you know the polyrhythm stuff and and shit like that it's it's not easy to play so anyway after going through a bunch of those tryouts and stuff like that or whatever you want to call them um it was just so long of us not f being able to find somebody and it got to the point of like you know, I, I just, I can't do it anymore, you know? And yeah, I mean, there's other, other reasons and other factors, I guess, that go into making a decision like that, you know, but it was a hard one, man. You know, I remember like talking to my parents about it and shit like that. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it sucks. Like you said, you put so much time and energy and, um, everything into that. It, it's the only thing you care about for, you know, when did I start playing? 14, 15 years old? Yeah, and it's that's every all day. I want to do. Yeah, all you want to do is, that's what I want to do with my life is play guitar. And then when that moment happens where you're like, I think, I think I'm done, you know? And again, it's not because we were, if we were still touring and playing music and shit like that, I'm sure it would have, but imagine being in a band and 10 months you don't have a drummer. You know, we're posting on, on, bands message boards this is before like you know um fucking facebook and stuff like that grinder everywhere yeah and then i posted on the mashuga message board did you really yeah and <laughs> i put the, the music <laughs> video for wandering eyes you know like touring band looking for drummer and i you know put the tour the wandering eyes video music video with it and i remember fucking bulb from uh and i've said this before too that fuckhead bulb from um what band is he in periphery that fucking fucking replied to it and was like, this is fucking like new metal. It doesn't, you know, like just basically shitting all over us. And at the time I was like, you know, I knew who he was and I respected him as a, as a musician and stuff like that. But I was like, I, again, back to the whole, th like, <laughs> like guitar player, musician saying something like, mm -hmm. I would never do that. Fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was your your boy was talking shit too. Who from Periphery? Yeah, that's Bulb or uh, Misha Mansoor. Yeah, Misha. Yeah, 
Yeah. Old. <laughs> yep. Fuck that guy. Well, Jay, it's good for you to get some of that off your chest and to refresh it in your memory because it's great, great memories, great stories, I'm sure. Can I finish it off with one thing? Of yeah, course. keep going. Keep going. I, I kind of, me and Balls kind of sent some messages back and forth about that whole situation of, of me leaving the band. And not only was it hard, like from me making that decision, it was hard telling three other dudes that, you know, like when you're in a band and you, and you tour and you sleep in a fucking van outside in fucking Maine in February. <laughs> Ringo. Yeah. Johnny yeah, Ringo, he, more like it. He loves Ringo. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I love those dudes. You know what I mean? I and, and when you are in that kind of situation, a band or whatever, like those are your brothers. You know what I mean? Like it's that whole one, you know, all for one, one for all mentality. Like that's how it is with those guys. And uh, <laughs> so I, can't, I can't be serious, man. You know, these, these people, everybody in the chat knows me too well. I, it's hard for me to be serious. So um, not only, like I said, not only telling myself that it was time, going into that, we, I did it at Mike Ball's house. We had a band meeting and shit. And having to face those guys and tell them that, I'm leaving. It's, it wasn't an easy thing, you know, because I knew it's like, shit, now what, you know? Yeah. So, again, I, you know, ending my, you know, partially ending my dream was hard enough to, to do to myself, but, you know, to tell those guys that, hey, I'm leaving the band, it's fucking, it was hard. I think one of the coolest things for you guys, I don't know if you remember, is when, when we met you. When Brian became your manager, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, actually, yes. <laughs> when um, yeah, fuck yeah, the video for the answer was premiering on MTV, mm -hmm. and you guys, you had a party, right? Because yep. it was on, I think it was Headbangers Ball. It was on a Saturday yeah. night, right? Yes. And I remember seeing Jimmy at the gym, and he was telling me about it. He's like, "Dude, the video is going to premiere." And I was, I was so pumped, and then I didn't go over there because I just wanted to watch it at my house and just to see that you guys had a video and like I knew Jimmy when since we were like little little kids and I don't know that shit was cool as hell to me so I'll never forget that that was that's probably one of my favorite Gizmachi moments that and when um you guys played with Slipknot that was mm -hmm. that was the shit and that was such a good show too um you know Lamb of God Shadows Fall you guys and Slipknot just fucking drenched panties slash mine it was amazing so drenched brian brian's boxers <laughs> instantly as soon as, as soon as slipknot starts playing starts setting up brian <laughs> brian's dick hole is just wide open just gaping it's like when i urinate i told this to kurt this is like, like dropping a bucket in huge huge anyway go ahead well then then the video aired and everybody was like this is the worst video i i can't watch it it's so bad it's not bad. Really? Oh, it's bad. Which not one is what it? I would have done? The answer. The answer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I argued. I argued about when when Clown was like, I think this should be the first single. I was like, oh no. Oh no. You know, because it's a very hard song to grasp. You know, there's a lot of weird rhythms in there and um very difficult song to play live, too. So that's Sorry, actually, not fucking Gizmachi talk. Well, I think real quick, that's my least favorite song off of uh, the imbuing. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I think the best part, I, I love Balls' vocals. I love Balls, but I love his vocals in that <laughs> I song. I Balls. I can't wait. The talk question to... is, this is the answer. I thought I can't it was wait. a great job. That one. <clears throat> no, one of, the, uh, one of the coolest riffs on that album is, is in that song, though, Brian. Yeah. I know, but it's just overall the song. Isn't that it? Can you hear that? I know I don't have my fucking amp on. Right? Is that one of them? Did it? Did it? No, I forget. Yeah. It's great. But Wandering <laughs> Eyes. Guitar in a week. Wandering Eyes is the shit. It's the fucking best. So we got I Love Dogs and I Love Balls. <laughs> you have to put them next to each other on the uh the old roadcaster. Love dogs. 
<laughs> we could have a easement and, and Charles Green talking to each other. <laughs> it's like I love dogs. I love balls. It's love a debate. Dogs. <laughs> I'd lo love to be paired up with uh, Charles Green. He's the man. I love Charles Green. How do, how do we start a chat? Can we start a chat and say fucking dogs or balls? Which <laughs> a, poll? a poll? A poll. Start a chat. I'm going to have to timestamp that, Brian. Okay. Definitely love right, balls. You guys talk do a poll. <clears throat> okay. And then... Um, Wait, can you hear this? No. Isn't it coming up? No. Nothing. Hold on, I gotta find it now. Kurt, uh, Jay Santiago's got a message for you if you want to chat about that. Okay, hold on a second. Sure. <laughs> you hear it? Can I talk about Wolfgang's honeymoon? Well, uh, it's none of my business, and I'm sure <laughs> Wolfgang doesn't want anyone talking about his honeymoon. I know he's going on tour in like 13 days, so it's probably going to be something quick. It's going on with Nita Strauss, right? Yep. That's a shit. It's good for him, man. I'm really happy to see that he's uh, he's doing well with his music. Yeah. He's coming to Seattle in December. I actually, my son wanted to go see him. So I don't know. I won't say never. I don't, maybe. Maybe. I was supposed to go to Aerosmith in November, but that got canceled. Because fucking Steven Tyler's a crackhead? Yeah, he blew his throat out. Is he a crackhead? He is uh, not a healthy man. He is not a healthy man. <laughs> How old is he? I mean, he's like he's in his fucking mid-70s, right? Yeah. He's got to be, yeah. Close. Probably close to 80. I mean, they were around the uh, early 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the drugs probably didn't help his aging process either. No. When his vocal style is very uh, taxing on the old vocal cords. How old is he? 75? Damn. What? 75. Shit. And I think Steven Tyler was like one of the picture book frontman you know back in the 80s yep the look is everything he was the perfect poster boy yeah he's one of those guys that had it he just had it right yeah the look the fucking voice the style the fucking small star. lips <laughs> the yeah. lips yeah <laughs> but real quick with um wolfgang that dude probably in the biggest shadow of anyone his dad is, you know, on the Mount Rushmore of all time greatest guitarists, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if, I think if you took a poll of an average person, people would say probably Hendrix, maybe Clapton, Eddie, Jim Root. No, I don't know. But like with the uh, <laughs> Brian, Brian Beesman, with the four, he'd Brian, be up there. Brian and then he goes out and does the same thing as his dad. And he's two albums in and he's doing well. Good for him, man. I'm, I'm really for him. And the thing that, and you know, have a bigger following, probably could do more. And he's like, no, I'm going to pave my own way. Good for him. That's awesome. Well, secretly, and I don't know the answer to this, but just what I've seen over the last, let's call it four years, he doesn't want to be in his dad's shadow. He doesn't want to be associated to the Van Halen band. Right. And I think a lot of Van Halen fans try to jerk him off. And I don't think he wants it. And they don't know any better because that's all they know. And um, he would probably rather not be associated with Van Halen. He would rather be associated with Wolfgang Van Halen, you know. Um, but I don't know. It, it's like all these Van Halen fans. I'm such a big Van Halen fan, so I need to love Wolfgang. I, I don't think he wants that. I think he wants people to like him for his music. Yeah, And he's probably going after a younger demographic. He doesn't give a shit about a 45 year old dude from Portland, Oregon, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, maybe he, because it's a fan and, you know, he's buying his, his CDs and going to his shows, but I don't know. Am I, I wrong? 
No, I, I agree. And I think what's cool, like I'll just use uh, Foot Cake, for example. He wouldn't have known who Wolfie was unless of his dad. And now Fruitcake loves Wolfgang. And I think so that's pretty cool where obviously he was introduced to him by, you know, because of the relation to his father. But like that's that's a shit. That's cool. So like I'll say Fruitcake loves him for like what he's doing. So, you know, and I don't think he would have had that ability to be known if he didn't. But that wasn't his dad. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? Do you have an opinion? I, I always have an opinion, man. That's that's part of my problem. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, like if there wasn't any Van Halen fans, you know, it wouldn't really... It's it's like a, a, a curse and a... Whatchamacallit? What's it called? I, I took something before the show started. Now started. A gift and a curse? Again, yes, a gift and a curse. Where it's like, yeah, it's fucking, it sucks. You're Eddie Van Halen's kid, but it's fucking great. You're Eddie Van Halen's kid. Mm -hmm. Because you instantly got to, you know, you didn't have to start at the end of the line or back of the line. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But again, there's always that thing where like, well, now you're going to be compared, which is why it's great that he isn't doing that type of shit. Because I think a lot of sons they look at it as like, oh, this is my way in. I, I can do my father's music. You know, he's not doing it anymore. Or he passed away, whatever the circumstances may be. And a lot of sons do try to, you know, I don't want to call it take advantage of that because that's not what it is. But he was in Van Halen for He was years. in Van Halen. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll... I'll I'll say I'm not the biggest fan of, of the music. I mean, I, I like it. It's cool. But, you know, I've given my opinion on it before. Um, I feel like he could take a few more risks and chances and not try to make it so radio. Um, again, my opinion. But, again, he's, he's doing his own thing. He's, it's original for him. It's not – he's not ripping off his dad, so. Right. And Christopher Live says it. Hey, I've seen him multiple times. This music's not for me. That's awesome. But at least you gave him a shot. It's because you love Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen. But um, if it's not for you, it's that's awesome. Like it's okay. Yeah. And that I, in which I four songs. Sorry, Brian. Four mm -hmm. songs on his first album that I like. Um, the second album, I kind of gave it a spin twice, and nothing stuck out to me. The second album. I think the production is yeah. uh, slightly better on the first album as well. And I love that people are not meat riding him just because of who he is. Like they're listening to what he's doing and basing if they like it or not off of the music as opposed to, oh, that's Eddie Van Halen's son. Like, Also, I think he has, he has a little bit of uh, – he's lucky in the sense that his father is, wasn't somebody that – he was he's Eddie Van Halen is respected by so, across music. He's not one of those guys that like people had animosity towards and just didn't like him for no reason. He didn't really piss anybody off. You know, he's not he's not one of those like uh, I, I don't even know who to who to bring up in that sense. Okay, except except yeah, like, Fred Durst. Yeah, he's he not, up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, in a tank. <laughs> you know, so if, again, if, if somebody hates your fucking dad, they're probably going to hate you. Or if they hold something against your dad, they're probably going to hold that against you. Where yeah. Wolfgang, not many people disliked his father. So, I, you know, again, I'm rooting for him because I, I loved his dad so much as a musician and, and all that stuff. So I'm rooting for him because he's got he has to overcome a lot. What's that? That you're rooting for Jim Root. I'm um, definitely no, but I'm definitely rooting for Van. Uh, Ed, I'm sorry, Wolfie, to do well just because of the shadow that he's in with his father. So, you know, good luck, man. I really hope you do well. Well, even though he's not playing Van Halen music, you know, if the younger generation gets into his music, most of them I think will find out about Van Halen. Yeah. Keep the shit alive. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Hellstorm. You're talking about his new wife. 
right. <laughs> you uh, fucking <laughs> see this is a rumor start. I thought he was talking about Genie. <laughs> Genie. <laughs> yeah, uh, Genie. Sorry. <laughs> 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 this is our rumor start. Yeah. If anybody takes anything from this show to start a rumor, they're a fucking idiot. Dude, the yeah, a lot of people, the boss said, uh, a lot of people don't know that Eddie and and Janie were divorced. Yeah, I'll say it. I don't. I mean, go ahead. I'd... Caleb's not here. We're not going to get him in trouble, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, didn't didn't he say there was going to be like some Mashuga stuff or Mashuga influence stuff on on his new album? <laughs> they played Mashuga at his wedding. Really? Is it on the fucking menu? I heard it last night on Footcakes. Oh, that's a shit. I'm sure Brian was swole. Definitely a little girthy at the at the moment. Did Wolfgang tell David Lee Roth to shut the fuck up on the tour? Uh, who wouldn't? Yeah, right. I loved. I'd love to tell David Lee Roth to shut up. <laughs> Man, right? he had he had an interview that just dropped on YouTube like last week, I think it was. Dave? And I com- yeah, some lady was interviewing him. Can't even remember who it was, but. I commented in the comments like I had to shut this thing off after three minutes because I was tired of hearing him laugh at himself. <laughs> Every time he made a statement, he would laugh at himself. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, you're in a room with one lady that's interviewing you. No one's laughing, dude. Like, <laughs> get over it. That's what he does. Like, I love Dave's music. Um, but dude, come on, man. When you're laughing at yourself, no one's laughing with you. Maybe that's why he does it. Well, he's not Diamond David Lee Roth anymore, man. You know, his shit ain't funny. He, he, when he was 27 big. and doing it, it's funny because you're fucking David Lee Roth. And now he's, he's like a, Cubic Zirconian Lee Roth, <laughs> David Lee Roth. He's Dave Roth now. Yeah. That's one guy that just, you could tell he is that. Like, he doesn't put on an act. You, yeah, guys, yeah. you guys might have to take the rest of this show. You all right? <laughs> you need me to come over and rub you down? Rub my dick. Uh, I was listening to a podcast. <laughs> Here I go, referencing other things. but What podcast? Say it. Yeah, which one? The Dave and Dave Unchained podcast, and they were saying... Who is David Lee Roth's friends? Like, who does he hang out with? Could you imagine? They couldn't name anyone. Like, other than like his bodyguard, like who does? He- other than people on his payroll, right? Yeah. Who does he hang out with? Does, does he have the same bodyguard from the eighties that everyone knew his name? Ed Anderson. Yeah. Steve Anderson <laughs> from the Southern <laughs> Tip. <laughs> so, like. Whenever you see Dave, he's by himself. Like, who hangs out with him? They couldn't answer it. I don't think anyone does. You know, it's sad. Yeah, when you think about Sammy, you could probably sit here all day. Brian, we could make like a list of yep. all of Sammy Hagar's friends. The boner list. <laughs> the boner list. Love Sammy me a friend. list. Love a list. <laughs> yeah. But could you imagine hanging, having to hang out with Dave Lee Roth? Unless he's something else than what we know. They say he's not. Remember that interview with that dude who like was was paid or whatever to film them? Or not even paid. I don't even think he got paid. And he showed up to like record Roth and he was he was fucking David Lee Roth. Yeah. Good night, Bruce. Andrew Bennett. Yeah. But I don't think with Dave's personality, he probably doesn't need any friends. He just looks in the mirror and laughs at himself. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like Brian yeah. when he when he highlights his own comments. <laughs> that's something that's something David Lee Roth would do. Yeah, he would. <laughs> it's an homage to David Lee Roth. <laughs> Hanging and banging. 
Uh, Fruitcake says Dave and Sammy both look much older in recent years. Gary still looks young. Um, Does in fact, Dave, Dave and Sam just had a birthday like last week, I think. Isn't but, Sammy like 80? 76. He's, he's older than Dave, I think. Yeah, he's, he's six years older than Dave. Dave's 70. Because Sammy think- posted a picture on his Instagram and put his his picture and Dave's picture and said it says 76 on Sammy's and 70 on Dave's. Kind of like, you know, poking fun at him. Like, he, oh, I no, look, really? yeah, you look like shit. Oh, yeah. Yep. Can you find it? I mean, I thought that's what you're looking for. Oh, I was checking his age. Oh. Well, Sammy, he he's definitely looking a little older now, but he's, you know, he, I think he stopped dyeing his hair as, as much as he used to, and it's not like rock star or long anymore. So. He was Father born Tom, about, ain't nice, man. 47, he was born. Do the math, Brian. Yep. 47, yeah, 76. Yep, same age as my dad. I, always say my, I remember saying to my dad, you know, a couple of years ago, we were watching some Sammy clip. He was on stage. And I was like, could you imagine, Dad, at, at 70, whatever the fuck it was at the time, 74 years old, like on stage in front of like thousands of people singing, you know, going on tour at that age? It's like, no. Who has a gut? Did Sammy or David? Yeah, Sam. Yeah. Who fucking cares? He's 76. Let him. Yeah. All right. I'm into the poll. 62% love dogs. I chose balls. Here. I chose balls. Well, we though. know you would. Yeah, I chose balls. Even though I, I do love dogs more than probably anything on the planet. But right now. <laughs> this just in. Forever Unchained 1981 just posted a photo of Wolfgang dancing with his mom. Shut the fuck up. It. That dude's got a problem. Who posted it? The fucking Jeff Gobbler. Jeff Gobbler. Forever and ever and never unchained. Gobbler. I don't can know we, this can guy. Gobbler? Can he, we he's just the meat riding. I bet he's got AIDS from all that meat riding he does of fucking <laughs> Daniel. It's ridiculous. Who gave Brian the sodium pentothal? <laughs> that guy just just gets yeah, on the damn is. Oh man. There's the photo, but the post. Oh, 69. 69. Look who's at the top. Look who's at the <laughs> top, dude. Caleb. Caleb. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, go to the go to the reply. What's the reply? Please be Sammy. Ah. What's Caleb have to say? Happy birthday. Happy birthday to both of you. Both front men of the greatest rock band of all time. Wouldn't it be funny if Sammy picked a picture from like three years ago and then put uh, Dave through like an old man filter? <laughs> well, it's obvious that Sammy still does color his hair. He's got the silver tooth. He's got grills. Does he do that for like street cred? <laughs> Remember he went on the Joe Rogan show with fucking yeah. with a missing tooth? <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna go on the biggest podcast on the planet, and f- what m- fucking myth with a missing tooth? Wow! Here you go, Brian. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Unchain the night. But tell oh, me that the love is gone. Let's check it out. Is the menu on there? Jesus, it's fucking. It, it, this guy takes it to a whole different level. Like, come it's on, the, man. <laughs> He's like, on my next interview, I'm going to talk to a person that was in Eddie Van Halen's study hall class. Like, who, who, <laughs> study fucking, hall class. Who, who fucking cares? <laughs> that fucking grin, man. I'm going to take a picture on a sidewalk that Eddie once walked on on his way. Who Shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> come on now. That's just so weird. Like, you're a grown man. All right. I'm going to get in trouble. Hey, get, get this fucking clown shoe off my, my screen. <laughs> What's going on? 
Brian, Brian Beesman. Brian, Brian Beesman. Sorry, I had a little too much pumpkin beer. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, Joe Brown is in the same boat. He says, uh, I'm much too drunk for this show. <laughs> Quentin says, Sammy Hagar is worth 500 million. Dave works Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with the BK Lounge. Oh, man. Crazy. Who goes to Burger King anymore? Who doesn't? We were talking about Burger King tonight. Who's we? Me and Janie. Remember the 99 cent Whoppers they had for like two years running? Probably. No? You know, I, I might go to Burger King. Right now, I'm actually that flame-broiled fucking bu uh, patty. I'm kind of... My, my mouth's watering... That's how fucking high I am right now that I want Burger King. <laughs> what's the one? What's the one that's like hot as shit and has like a red bun? Oh yeah, that's a ghost Flame pepper or whopper, or whatever it is. It's, it's the ghost red bun. Yeah, it's ghost pepper. It's the shit. Yeah, lava out of your ass. <laughs> Just molten. <laughs> there's a there's a Burger King by us, but it's like there's never anybody there. And the last thing I want to do is go to any kind of restaurant. When nobody visits. It's like, how old is the food that we're getting? You know? Why don't you go live from in and out? <laughs> yeah, super yeah, you some money. I do prefer uh, Burger King's breakfast. As far as they have, I prefer their sausage and cheese uh, croissant. What about the French French toast sticks that you dip in the... Remember them shits in the syrup? syrup? Yeah, yeah, I do. They're real good. Their their hash browns are better than McDonald's fucking hash patty. Yep. It's always wet and fucking, fucking soggy. soggy. Like, 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 like Brian's panties. Jay, you're <laughs> echoing super hard right now. It's, that means it's not me. It's somebody else. It uh -huh. means it's Kurt. If you and I... Well, Kurt's fine now. I'm fine as fuck. The BK Lounge has the original chicken sandwich with cheese. Oh, so good. Oh, the long one? Yeah, that's the, the shit. Long <laughs> the long one. The long one. How big is it? What is it like? <laughs> With the diced up lettuce in it? That stuff is so good. You get the mayonnaise <laughs> smile. Looks like you just got done sucking cock. <laughs> Peter North. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys ever get like the filet of fish or whatever from McDonald's? Yeah, back in the day. I don't understand. Why would you ever get fish from a burger joint? Never. I just I can't can't trust it. <laughs> it's like an actual recording from my bathroom. At, le at least once a day. Filet of fish. <laughs> Even the McRib. I'm like, it's fucking. It's not McRib's a burger back right now. Is it? Yeah. Speaking of ribs. <laughs> We had another GIF in the uh, in the old repertoire before the show started. And I was like, Alvaline uh, motor oil. Is this one okay with uh, for YouTube and both Brian and Kirk? Like, probably not. I don't know if we could show uh, that one. So, what's your guys' take on hot food? Do you like it spicy, or do you like a little spice, or do you like fucking flamethrower? Jay. I, I like. Oh, go ahead, Jay. No, you, go ahead. You were you were on deck, ready to talk. I I still have to think about it. So real quick, uh, I want to mention uh, Cameron Brown. Here's where Eddie Van Halen took a shit on March 26, 1979. We'll be discussing this and more on my show Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> oh, anyone that is like that should fucking just go get hit by a car. Like just run in traffic. That's fucking absurd. Oh, listen. He, you know, here's my argument. A, a, uh, listen, if you do a show dedicated to a topic, <laughs> sorry, Cameron Brown wasn't here last week. If you're if you're just tuning in, you tune in at the right time, and if you're not watching right now, you're done fucked up because we're <laughs> we're going off the rails now. Um, if you do a a show based on a certain topic or a certain band or whatever, like I get it. You know, because people want to see 
that type of thing or want to hear about that type of thing. So on one hand, yeah. On the other hand, it's like, well, you know, like Brian, if you did a Slipknot show, you know what? I would never do that because I have a fucking sophistication and I respect myself. I don't fucking, I, don't, I just don't do that. It's just so weird. Like it's, I understand the music, like the music stuff of like, Hey, they performed here or this riff here. I'm all for it. But like, as a per, it's like stalking. It's just a whole different realm of sickness and weirdness to me. Like, no, I would never do that about Slipknot. Like, you know who I don't give a fuck where J uh, James Root went to school? I, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Fuck, fuck that. <laughs> I, I care about him playing on stage, writing music, talking about music, because that's what he does. I do not care about, you know, he likes to like pick his, like play with his balls in his spare time. Cool. Good for him. I just don't care. Like, no one should care. He's a Play grown man. Let him be. You know, it's just, it's just fucking but stalking. He falls a lot. <laughs> and, and, and this has no shot to like anyone, and, and definitely not to Johnny Bean. Like, Johnny loves doing stuff about Van Halen, which is great. But when you take it from a music standpoint to like just him as a human being, that's it's just so fucking weird. It is. That's, and if, uh, if you're, if you're looking at it like, Brian, I don't know. Look at yourself in the mirror. You know I'm right. You know I'm fucking right. That's the stuff <laughs> that Eddie hated. Yeah, he hates it. So don't do it. If you're that big of a fan, don't mead ride him. That's what he's saying. He's like, just let him just enjoy my music. That's it. I'm done. Thank you. I can see Brian <laughs> going to the gro grocery store to the deli. I'll take a <laughs> pound of uh, roast beef. Uh, how thick do you want it? Enough to ride. <laughs> <laughs> how big is it? Speaking of that, oh, cold cuts are now, aren't they? <laughs> you got have you guys purchased cold cuts lately? Uh like from a like Jersey Mike's? No, from a fucking food like a grocery store. Yeah. Holy shit. Right? It's like 12 bucks a pound. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking, and you get boar's head, God forbid. Holy yeah, I'm shit. going to, to the spam aisle next. Steeper. <laughs> I said shit myself. <laughs> Spam in your lunchbox at work. Zims! What? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Zim Zimmerman. Zims. It's good to see you, Dane. You sexy son of a bitch. Good to see you. Where are you going to be on Tuesday, Dane? Are you? Is your band playing? <laughs> dog. Gonna be able to, that's right he's still on there right whiskey dogs on tuesday no at um what is it called the santa marine marina and the pinta what is it santa yeah. cruz santa cruz the nina the pinta and the santa maria yeah now we're going all historical on your asses yeah ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only had one beer. What the fuck is wrong with me? Sorry. Sorry, guys. What was in it? Um, a roofie? Rufalin? <laughs> the Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> zip, zippy, did you dare? Oh, man. How long did he get away with it? Um, I don't know, like 40 years. Man. Just dropping Rufalin and drinks and dropping panties. What a sick bastard he was. Hey, what was the one off Eddie Murphy? <clears throat> What's the quote where he's doing Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> How's it go? I've heard you do it. I'm trying to think which line it is. What you gonna do? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't remember what he says. It's pretty good, but it's we gotta clip that. That's great. <laughs> oh man, I see too much child. I see child. I can't do it now. Oh, child, what do you do for five, five, five children? <laughs> She's cooking it up, man. She's cooking it up. That's just the shit, man. Diamond Dave's ego. <laughs> What? I'm Dave's ego in the chat. <laughs> the lone wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Let's let's uh 
Thank the sponsor. All right, I got a piss. Bad. All right, All so right. Kurt, 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 DJ. I can taste it. All right, everyone. Make sure you go to Colonel's Gourmet Popcorn and more. Go to their website. They got great sweet treats right now for Halloween. Use coupon code UTB15 to get now, 15%. Off. The is ready to sip. Ready to sip. Shea, Shea said he's ready to sip them. There you go, Shay. <laughs> so thank you, Colonel Popcorn. I mean, get your Chicago mix right now. It's the season. Tis the season. I mean, Brian shoves that stuff in his mouth so fast, it's gone. It's amazing. God bless and then, you. Which, go check them out. They got everything for your guitar. If you need to upgrade hardware, pickups, get some kill switches, get some strings, get some goddamn pedals. They got it. I'll, you can need 15. I'll be there later tonight. I got to order some shit. So, Rob, coming you for get? you, bud. Uh, I need some strings. There you go. Yeah. I'm going to look at see some other shit I need. And uh, channel members. Yeah, it's our, our channel members. These um, these motherfuckers um, love us. They provide us money each month so we can put on this amazing show. Yep. So our channel members, thank you. If you want to be a channel member, it's pretty easy to do. Just tell Andy Carson to probably buy it for you because he's a fucking man. And then you'll have some emojis you type in. Your font is green, like money. It's fucking amazing. And uh, I'll go in front of your name and then well, Michael Jackson here will We'll grab your gun. Yeah. Um, and if you, there's some pretty cool shit going on in this picture too, that I just realized that <laughs> Kurt, you're the background. <laughs> I never saw that, but a couple of people I like to point out as channel members that, you know, are, are always around. We got, you know, like Smitty, Leo Safko. Thank you. Randy Price, CC, Johnny Moronic, you know, Etna, Cigna, you know, <laughs> everyone, everyone on this, we fucking love. So. Five Thank names you. to that. Uh... Billy Badass to Silva. Yeah. And then, um, so those are our channel members. So if you want to be fucking cool like these motherfuckers, sign up. Jay, but I these... updated that. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? You'll get that. You don't see it? <laughs> you got Beesman over there. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Carlson's uh, on the list. We got Michael the Captain Smith, the Captain, everybody, the Captain. Randy Price. Yeah. Uh huh. 5150 Fairwall. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nelson Rodriguez, you <laughs> RIP. Oh, David. All night. <laughs> We got the Paul Martin Woods. War one leg, one egg. Is it one egg or war egg? I think it's one egg, yeah. Sherman the Tank Callahan. Jimmy Ray Hawkins with an S. And then we got Fairfield Guitar Co. Lewis. Thank you. Lewis? Frank Big Cochran. Maggie Mojo. Tommy, false flag from the down under. You might want to watch that slob of the strike. Right, do we? Z. Gridler. And then this has a asterisk. He has Cobb. You're back. 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 Randall Cobb. Oh, yeah? yeah we haven't seen Jimmy. Ray Hawkins in a minute. Hope he's doing well. Yeah. Hope everybody's doing well. Definitely. Well. Hope to see you soon, Jimmy. My name is Jeff. <laughs> Those are the head oh, motherfuckers fuck. on the channel. So, the Patreon members, we love you. Fuck yourself. Ruin. We got some shit coming your way soon. Go ahead, Jay. The fuck are you doing? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Got <laughs> <laughs> his stuff. Cat Shut daddy. My stuff for everyone. I got some new to start no thing. trouble. Just here to do the Super Bowl shuffle. Check out my widow's peak. It's thinner than your dick. <laughs> got the cat shirt on. All right, ready? It's catter day. <laughs> catter day. Got my drink in my hand. Just a <laughs> shadow way. All right, ready? I got me. I got me. Oh, his shoes went flying off. <laughs> his shoes are gone. What is that? Snake, you might want to you might want to watch that slab of the strike. Right there, got him. It's got one of those Stanley mugs. I got beer. I got beer. I got beer. I got beer. It's my fucking worst nightmare right there. Oh! 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 I got beer. <laughs> it looks like he has a flashlight sticking out of that cup, doesn't it? It is. That's why he's trying to go in so fast. <laughs> oh man, the flashlight. What is it? Is it? No, oh, no, it's a oh, damn it. I should have left it. Who's like a flashlight? Uh Thing snapped at him. Bow. Right on his ball spot. <laughs> what kind of, do we have any um <laughs> any crocodile hunters in the fucking shit who know what kind, <laughs> kind of uh, snake that is? Look at his hand. <laughs> it's a no thank you snake. Fuck that. <laughs> Any ideas? That's a fucking Brink security commercial. <laughs> Wait, we got slow motion. What's he do? Stop. Who's going to cover that? <clears throat> Dude, watch his shoes fly off, Jay. Both of them are gone. <laughs> watch this. I got fear. <laughs> watch his shoes. They're gone. Watch. The first one is the, his left one or his right one's off already, right? The one on the ground? Yeah. And this one goes flying. Oh, maybe that one stayed on. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> There's both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Oh! Oh! I got beer! Oh! 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 Big snake I got beer! I got beer! Oh! I got beer! Oh! Oh, man. You ever see those videos of like somebody's filming the top of a toilet and all of a sudden like a big fucking spider comes from out like from under the seat? Yeah. Sometimes I think about that, man, when I'm like sitting on the toilet about to just rip a shit. <laughs> Fuck you rip a shit. Rip a shit. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Rip a shit. All right, let's uh, let's do. The... <laughs> do you guys right. want what? He just looked at you like you were. Oh, all right. Do you guys want a bicycle or explosion? As long as someone doesn't lose an eyeball, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's no more of that. No more of that. Do you want bicycle let's, or explosion? Let's go explosion. Okay. <clears throat> That's what happened in Brian's pants earlier. 
everywhere. <laughs> Look at the guy's face on the ground. Yeah. Here's Jay and Kurt working. Come on, oh. <laughs> Bro, Beesman, Stillman. Right I got to turn the volume down on this one because I know the, the kaboom is pretty fucking loud. Dude, you wear a hoodie underneath no. Huh? Jean jacket. You wear a hoodie underneath the jean jacket. You deserve to get hurt. This is the Canadian tuxedo, I guess. Right? The Jay Leno. <laughs> Where's the fire at? Damn, yes. <laughs> the next the next song i mix i'm gonna replace the kick drum with that <laughs> holy shit imagine imagine the bridge section for metallica's one with that <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can do it. Ready? Let me see if I can do it. I'm, I'm yeah, not so about to rock. Yeah. Fuck. Come on. All right, slow mo. No. Look at, look at his shirt bag. <laughs> look at his pants get blown out. Look at the guy on the right. And it seems like all of a sudden he's wearing a size, he's wearing Shaquille O'Neal's right shoe. It looks like his shoe uh, is getting, never mind. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, you know, says, isn't that the kick drum uh, from Pantera's The Domination, the, the breakdown part? Jin, 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 jin. <laughs> you, think that, you think they're deaf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, comment of the fucking night. Comment <laughs> of the fucking night right there. Oh, that is good. <laughs> the boy. The blue no. bag. It's a boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be hard to top that one, boys. But we're gonna try. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> when you guys get in your uh, Grubhub or who who delivers on on uh, motor scooters, on go peds? Grubhub. Grubhub does. Imagine this was your uh, food. <laughs> 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 That's great. <laughs> that person's got to be fucked up. I, did they just drive into a hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Stairs. Uh, Those are stairs. <laughs> he went up the stairs. That's impressive. <laughs> oh no, your Adidas aren't going to stop you. My Adidas. Free <laughs> within 30 minutes or less. <laughs> <laughs> three free within 30 minutes or your driver is going to come crashing through your front door <laughs> is that march on lynch trying to flag him down <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if that's him waiting for his food <laughs> hey what's all the shit coming out of the back of his motorcycle 
Red Was it oil? Is that his shoe? Go back shoe to the beard. beginning. There's like red shit coming out the back. Like, look at that. Oh. Yeah. I'm trying to tell what Ruby, that is. Ruby, red, Ruby red squirt coming out. <laughs> it's <his> shit. <laughs> Dude, I think that's his shoe up in the air there on the left hand side. Or, fe- or feces when he shit himself as he was going oh, out yeah. to go. <laughs> it, it is his shoe. shoe. It is you. <laughs> it's a datus. Oh my god. It's like a fucking Nike commercial. Oh my god. Yeah, what do you do in that situation, right? Do you bail? Do you jump off? Take the corner. Yeah. Do you have time? Just drive right in the wall. <laughs> yeah. I didn't check to see how this how this kid was. So if he's dead, I apologize. <laughs> wow. Apology yeah. accepted. <laughs> let's, let's slow motion this one. Did we do that yet? No. No. <laughs> Why do they stop filming? I want to know what happens. I know, right? All these videos, all the tragic ones, the videos stop. It's like, come on, keep it going. Damn. Okay. The fuck are you doing? Yeah. Nice hat. Great show, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Love it. Great job, boys. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Really appreciate it. And if you're still watching at 11.19 p.m. Eastern... <laughs> Thank you. God bless. And if you guys could be so kind to lightly tap the thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, comment on the shows, talk about Jay Schnoz, whatever works for you. Just fucking just do it. Talk about my five heads. But thank you, everyone. Support us. Tell your friends. Let's fucking build this channel up. That's all I got for you. All right. Hold on, Jay. Before you, you got the in, the outro video. Last time we did an Irish goodbye. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I always, I, I feel bad. It's like when the Bears lose for the whole week, I feel like shit. And the two or three times that I've ended the show without showing the outro for a full week, I've felt like shit. So it's true. I said, "Hey, hell for him, motherfucker, dick pussy snot and shit." Good night. Good night. Suck my dick. Bye bye. What's up guys? Hey, I'm at Guitar Center and I'm just gonna...